make your way to your seat this morning. Amen. I feel a special presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. But I did feel a shift in the spirit this morning. Amen. And so we have to be mindful of what God wants. Praise God. How many is glad to be here this morning? Thank you, Jesus. I am thankful for all the prayers uh, that went up for me, amen, flying out to Ohio, amen. It's probably one of the best meetings I've been to. And uh, I'm sure I'll probably say that after every meeting. But uh, I want every one of you, I'm trying to get the messages they were recorded. I'm trying to get them. I want you to hear them. Uh, both messages were absolutely wonderful and absolutely what we need here. Amen. And so uh, as they were being preached and different things were happening, I was, I was wishing that the whole church was with me in Ohio and uh, such a good, good Good meeting, good outturn. Uh, there was unity there. Amen. There wasn't no battleship. It was fellowship. Amen. And I appreciate, appreciate good men in my life. Amen. And God is good. God is good. Thankful to be back home, though. I, uh, I told Brother Hagler he was driving me around and uh, picked me up from the airport and took me back. I said, well, it was two days was fast. Seemed like we was just here the other day <laughs> in this car going back to the airport or from the airport and to the airport. And I said, but I'm I'm ready to get home. Amen. And uh, I just like being home. And uh, and so I'm definitely glad to be here this morning. We're glad that Brother Randy Harrington is here. And. At least one of his kids. Where's the rest of them at? They they're they're busy doing other things, and uh, but we're glad they're here. I think Brother Putman and them have uh, made it back. If they're not still traveling, and uh, they were up there with us. So, but anyway, we're glad he's here, and we're gonna hear from him in just a second. Uh, but uh, anyway, we're glad everybody's here. I'm glad everybody made it. We're missing a. Missing some. Um, Brother Aaron is sick. We need to pray for him. Still having those stomach issues or whatever it is. Uh, it, I think, he, did he say it was diverticulitis or colitis or something? Or? Colitis, yes. So, oh, well, he has been to the hospital, doctor. I'm glad. Yeah. Well, we need to pray for him. Uh, that. Uh, he texted me just maybe a few minutes ago and saying that he needed prayer and uh, he was uh, vomiting and stuff. So whatever it is, it's got him, got him down. So we need to pray for him. Um, let's pray for Violet. She's uh, not here today, I, I believe, with family. And so, no, she's here. She, she made it. Amen. I mean, she may not be feeling 100%, but she's here. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And uh, prayed for my wife earlier. She's got this uh, something going on with her voice and throat. So, and I'm, uh, amen. And we're, we're just believing God's a healer. He can do it. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're still praying for John. And I, I really want to see him get the Holy Ghost, but it's up to him. It's not up to me. If I could pour the Holy Ghost out on folks, <laughs> I'd definitely do it. We'd have, we'd have a church. We'd have a house full. Brother James, you'd have to stop your job for about a month to help me build a new church. No more traveling. Amen. Brother James, you got experience at blowing insulation? Amen. We could use some of that in the new building. Amen. Brother Randy, just stay around and help us. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. If I could pour out the Holy Ghost, that's the way it'd be. But I can't. 
I can only tell you about it and how to get it. Praise God. Everybody needs the sweet Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Well, glory to God. Brother Harrington, come on up here and um, greet this congregation. So glad he's here. He texted me yesterday, last night, said he was going to be here. So we're thankful. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise Aren't you glad to be in church? Yes. And I give honor to your pastor, uh, pastor's wife, and uh, give honor to my pastor, um, Elder Putman. I'm sure he did a phenomenal job preaching. Amen. He's, he's uh, one of my favorites. And uh, give honor to my bishop, Elder Jones, and Sister Jones. And uh, during song service, I was thinking of a song, and I'm not no singer by no means, but it's something that back at home we've, we've been singing a lot of, and, it's, and it goes, uh, all my life, he has been faithful, and all my life, he has been so, so good. And every breath that I'm able for the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been so faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. And every breath that I am able. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life, God, you've been so, so good. And every breath, God, every breath. Come on, church, can we pray? He's been so good to us. Come on, he's been so faithful. He's been such a good God to us. So come on, he deserves it all in this house. Come on, church. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, he's a good God. He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. Aren't you thankful for a faithful God? Oh, whenever you have been, haven't been so faithful, God's been faithful. Oh, whenever you haven't been your best, God's always been his best. Oh, I thank God for a faithful God, a God that's unchanging, a God that's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, a God that comes on the scene whenever you need him the most. Uh, a God that's there whenever you... Oh, come on, church. Uh, he's been so faithful. Uh, he's been so good. Uh, he's been my everything. Uh, oh, whenever I haven't been my best, my God's been best to me. Uh, when I haven't been the good, oh, my God's been so good to me. Uh, oh, he's been faithful. Uh, whenever I haven't been faithful, uh, oh, my God is so, so faithful. Uh, and he's so, so good. I come to magnify him. I come to worship him. I didn't come back. Amen. Let's just sit here. But my God's been so good and faithful that I can't just sit here. But God, I got to cry out and let you know that you've been faithful. Oh, come on, that's it. Hallelujah. He wants to hear your praise in this house. He loves that sound. He loves it whenever you open your mouth and begin to give him some praise in this sanctuary. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. If you have breath, praise ye the God. Oh, everything that has breath, praise ye God. Oh, because he's been faithful. He's been good. He's been my everything. God, you deserve it. Oh, come on. Holy God. Ghost, come down. Holy Ghost, have your way. Holy Ghost, go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Come on, let's love them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you, God. I magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. He's been so, so good to us. Amen. Every breath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the righteous breaths, and that's the wicked breaths. Amen. Praise the Lord. They've been... Many a times God had helped you in a bad situation. Maybe you were drunk. Had a party somewhere. Not even living for God. Hallelujah. Maybe you were stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Mighty God, mighty God. In the name of Jesus. Do you know how merciful God has been to you? Oh, God, I praise you. My Lord, I praise you. Mm, yeah, Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Yet a roboco telemanda. Yandera boco telemanda. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him. Let's get our minds on him. Hallelujah. Uh, let's magnify him. God, we praise you. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, rabba, rata, kala, rabba, hallelujah, la, 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 rabba, kata, rata, la, rabba. Yeah, mondo, kata, rabba. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Yeah, namarabba. Hallelujah, 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 Rabakatai. Mm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Ya Rabakata Rabahai. Ya Terila Bohosata Rabakai. In the name of Jesus.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's love him one more time. All over this place. God, we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful presence of the Lord this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the visitation. Mighty God, we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so good. God is so faithful. Mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to do my best to uh, minister to you here this, this morning quickly, speedily, amen, <clears throat> what the Lord has put on my heart through prayer and uh, asking God for strength, asking God for guidance, direction, amen, and I believe he's helped me this morning, and uh, I just want to deliver my heart to you this morning. Amen. You know, we have plenty of songs we can sing. I don't know, probably over a hundred songs, I imagine. We can come in here and we can have good, good church. Amen. We can sing slow and we can sing fast. And anywhere in between. Amen. And God can move during the worship. There's been times when that's all it was, was worship. Because the Holy Ghost moved. Last Sunday morning is a perfect example. And uh, the evangelist didn't even get to preach. And nobody's complaining. I mean, he wasn't complaining. And uh, God just moved. That's wonderful. Did you know that can happen? Every service? But that don't mean it's the will of God. To just continue to keep happening. Don't let me lose you now, okay? We love worship and we love singing and we love praising. There's sometimes we come in here and we get this spirit of prayer and and, and weeping, amen? How many's ever experienced those kind of services where you just feel so clean and washed when, you, when it's done? Isn't that wonderful? What if we had those kind of services every time? You know what we would feel? <laughs> washed up. We would. We'd be looking for the shout again. And so on and so forth. Amen. What we need to be looking for is not necessarily the shout. Not necessarily the, the, the getting drunk on the Holy Ghost. Not necessarily the weeping. But what every one of us need to be desirous of is speak to me, God. Because if God don't speak to us, we just come in to have fellowship. That's it. And this does not 
feeds you. It helps you, but it don't feed you. Amen. How many is going to help me this morning? Praise the Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so we need the Word of God. Amen. If I, as your pastor, came with the notion of, well, I've been here five years now, and if I came with the notion of just pacifying you, that's all you'd be, pacified. But if I helped you understand how Jesus is God, not just that he is, but how he is, then you've been blessed. You have an understanding. If I have instructed you in, a, in, in such a way that you absolutely know without a shadow of a doubt that Halloween is wrong, you've been helped and you've been blessed. And so, I want to thank you for not putting shackles on me. Praise the Lord. When it's time to preach, you've let me preach. Amen. I don't think I've had one instance where the door was thrown open and slammed shut by somebody leaving. Some of you might have been real close. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you understand, I have no desire to grind you into the ground and make you feel like something you're not. Amen. Furthermore, I can't give up on you if God ain't gave up on you. And I'm not God. Every breath. <laughs> well, praise God. Thank you, Brother Harrington. Thank you for that. Amen. But here we are, and it's the word of the Lord. Amen. God, help me today. Help me today. Help me today. Praise the Lord. And if you're going to be helped, you're going to have to let me help you. Amen. I want to get something out of the way real quickly because there might be a misunderstanding. If I'm preaching against something, let's say, let's say I'm, and I'll just put this out here because, you know, young people deal with it a lot. You know, Jesus said, if you look upon a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery. All right. Now, some of y'all out there have been praying and fasting, and I know you're not caught up in anything like that. And you're thinking, get them, preacher, get them young people. Man, get them, get them, get them. I'm, I'm preaching to the young people. But you got to take it to heart, too, because any temptation can come. It ain't just young people getting married and divorced. It's middle-aged people dealing with it. It's even older folk. Absolutely. Well, so what I'm saying is, if you don't feel like something's being preached to you, don't just throw it to the back. Well, that ain't for me. Oh, I know who that was for. Well, bless your heart, you might know who it was for. But I'm telling you, it's the Word of God. Amen. What if I'm dealing with somebody over here that's jealous? Can I just, can I just help you today? Brother James, Sister Hannah, y'all got a good spirit. I tell you right now, if y'all come in five minutes late to find somebody had gotten your seat. Amen. Praise the Lord. And somebody got your seat. Now they've been sitting there.
Memphis. I don't know when. That's where they sit. Amen. I can close my eyes. I know where everybody's at. I know Sue sits over there. I know Harrington sits over there. And, and well, I just I can walk around. I don't even have to. I preach with my eyes closed. I preach right at you. Amen. I just know where you're at. Now, don't move around while my eyes are closed. Amen. But they're jealous now because somebody got their seat. And I got to deal with it. Man, they're mad. They're angry. Them visitors, that's the third time them visitors come and they know we sit there. It happens in churches where y'all believe it or not. It does happen. And so the preachers, the pastors got to get them to deal with it. It's, don't have jealousy in your heart. Don't, don't be bitter. I'm preaching over here to them. Everybody knows they stormed out of here mad. Everybody knows they was upset. Everybody knows it. I, everybody knows I'm preaching to them. How, how dare you not take the heart, the scripture that I'm preaching to them and, and keep it in you so that it don't happen to you? So this business, well, he ain't preaching to me. I am preaching to you. Yes, sir. I'm preaching to everybody so it don't happen again. Right. Well, I already got one God down. Well, okay, but you got to keep it. Amen. You got to keep it. Amen. Somebody said, well, let me show you where the Trinity is at. And you ain't looked at one God in a while. Brother James, now you don't pray for a long time. You don't get the Holy Ghost for a good while. And somebody say, you remember this that we used to do? And it'll start appealing to you again. But if you're full of the Holy Ghost, yes, sir. yeah, I remember that. Don't want nothing of it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to help you today. I'm going to talk about some things that's going to help everybody today, okay? Don't, don't, don't brush it off. Don't, don't put it to the back. Amen. If the shoe don't fit, don't put it on. Oh, wait a minute. That ain't how it goes. If the shoe fits, wear it. Now, y'all have heard me say, if it don't fit, quit trying to force it on. That's true. But look, don't look at a pair of shoes and say, I know them won't fit. If I'm preaching against bitterness, you need to look and say, I need to make sure I haven't been bitter. Apply it. Well, I ain't committed adultery. Well, look and see first. Well, you see somebody walking by and you went, and you almost went. I'm just telling you. Hey, well, all right. Genesis. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Hallelujah. God is in the business of helping everybody every day, saints and sinners alike. Nobody got a monopoly on this. Amen. I might have a good spirit today and, and need help tomorrow because I got a bad one. And here's the scriptures that's going to help me. Amen. Genesis chapter 13, verse number 8. Genesis 13, 8, and Abraham said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee. Between me 
and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Abraham simply asked him, don't told him that don't let there be let there be no strife I pray thee between me and thee between my herdmen and thy herdmen praise the Lord one more scripture and I'll pray and let you be seated Genesis 45 and verse 24 Genesis 45 in verse 24, chapter 45, verse 24, amen. Praise God. Genesis 45, 24, so he sent his brethren away, and they departed. And he said unto them, see that you fall not out by the way. He wasn't talking about tripping over a stump and falling, stepping into a little pothole and stumbling over. He said, see that you don't have a falling out, by the way. Don't get into a argument. Amen. Joseph had... tricked them, or hid his identity from them, caused them to be in all kind of stress, put a golden cup in one of them's bag, and all kinds of things. And now he had revealed himself to them, and he sent them on their way. And he said, don't fall out. I wonder what they could have fallen out over. Reuben, that was your idea. I shouldn't have went through with that. Now look at it. We look like a bunch of dummies. Now what are we going to tell him we did with his coat? I mean, they could have. Well, praise the Lord. Let's pray. God, we love you, Jesus. I ask you to help us here today, God. Lord, let the Holy Ghost flow in this place today. Once again. God, we need your help here today, God. I want you, to, Lord, to bless each and every person under the sound of my voice here today, God. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Abraham told Lot, don't let there be any strife between us. Amen. You know how a good church stays good? There's no strife. Amen. I may have to borrow your boys, Sister Hannah, and, my, and maybe some of mine. You got any toys? I know they brought toys to church. Yeah, I want to play with them. Yeah. Mm hmm. What about mine? Elijah, did you bring any army men? I know you got army men. Where are you at? Here he is. Or did you get in trouble and mom wouldn't let you bring them this time? One or two. Well, just sit right here, buddy. Just sit right there. Come on over here. Man, y'all are going to get to help preach today. Amen. Now, where's your toys at? Oh, Alan, you got toys, Alan? Let me see. Everybody needs a toy. Come on. There ain't no more toys in the house. Lord have mercy. We got to be here all day with these kids. They ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Joy, what are you doing with their toys, I tell you? Amen. Oh, my goodness. Alec, come on. Somebody go to the store. Buy them some toys. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, I want y'all to pile all the toys right here in this pile. Right down there. Don't be afraid to make a pile. There you go. 
Man, that's a lot of toys. Now, whose toy is that? Not that one, that one. Levi. Yeah, that's Levi? Yep. Okay, we'll put it over here. Now, whose toys are the Legos? Okay, hand them to me. Let's make Alec a pile over there. Y'all just stand by. We're getting it set up here. Amen. Oh, that's a way over there. All right. Whose are them toys? Okay, make you one. Whose is that one? We don't even know who that one is. Oh, and yours. All right. Okay. Alec, you got the most toys, I tell you. Amen. <laughs> now they got three different ownerships here Alex Levi's and Elijah's now typically when children are in their zone They'll come up with some kind of game with these. I don't even know what they could do with that. A little pop. What do you call that thing? Somebody know? Somebody said something. A poppet. Let me have that thing. I got to figure it out. Somebody, an adult said they're addictive. Oh, good Lord. All you do is push it? All right, up. I pushed them all. They keep unpushing. Now what? Are you kidding? <laughs> so now you got to push it all this way, huh? Okay, we could be here a while. I, listen, this toy don't go with those toys or that toy. But if they all got together and got in their little zone like little boys can do, they can figure out to do something to do with this. Now, I don't even know how to imagine how this will work, but they can make it work so that that pile can go in there and throw that one over there, and they can all have a good time. How many sit and watch children having a good time? Oh, man, their imagination's crazy, ain't it? Wow, look at that. But what happens after a few minutes? Strife begins to happen. Those are my Legos. Well, that's my G.I. Joe. Well, that's my poppet. And my, and my, what is that thing, a dragon? Oh, Lord, have mercy, a two-headed dragon. I don't know if we need that one. <laughs> I don't even know how you could play with that. <laughs> anyway, imagination can go wild, right? Strife begins to disassemble all of the fun time. Because that's mine and that's yours. You can't play with mine no more. I don't, know, I don't know what triggered it, but it happened. For a brief moment, ownership, things began to divide. Abraham said, let there be no strife between me and thee. Let there be no strife between my herdsmen and your herdsmen. Praise the Lord. There's something special that God likes about unity. And so, when Elijah grabs up his toy, get it there, son. Boy, come on. And he says, you know what, Alec or Levi, I want you to play with that one. I just want you to play with that today. They, they, they're learning, they, they've just done something. That creates peace and unity. It's no longer about, well, it's my G.I. Joe. Now, we may have to correct something later on, but right now, you see the unity? 
And Levi says, all right, well, I'll let you play with my, my, my push buttons. Yeah, pop it. Thank you, brother. And Alex says, all right, Levi, you can play with my Legos. Is that all right? Yeah, see? I was worried for a minute. <laughs> yeah, so were the rest of us, yeah. And now Levi gets to play with the Legos. And, and I guess the dragon, too. Amen. And so they can come together again and figure out a nice little game. Okay? Now, they've been many a times. I've seen them a way lot more toys than this around the house. Amen. I've even stepped on some of these right here, and I had to go repent. Because these things right here hurt. Amen. Brother Doyle, don't ever step on one of these. They'll do you in. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Amen. You got to learn how to get along, don't we, boys? Huh? How many times you heard mom and daddy say that? Y'all get along. Be nice to one another. Right? Don't pick up your brother and body slam him. <laughs> yeah? You ever done that? No. Oh, good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Y'all bigger ones better not be doing that. Hallelujah. Amen. Jordan, you ever just held them upside down? No. You got this, you got strife and you got unity. Which one do you want? Because we can do it both of them all day long. When you come in the house of God and there's no unity, God can't move like he did this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and if not, he'll move on those that are got their spirit right, but the, but the ones that just got their arms crossed, they just, and got their, their eyebrow turned downward. They, they not get nothing. You just showed up. And that's not the way God wants it. Come on, let's, let's get along, Lot. Let's get along. You know what Joseph said? Please don't fall out by the way. We don't have to figure out who did what. We don't have to figure out whose fault it was. Come on, I don't have to figure out what your problems are. Amen. In order to forgive you. Amen. Can you imagine the Apostle Paul having a hard time with accept people being accepting of him? Yeah, we saw what you did to Stephen. Oh, you might not have thrown the stones, but you stood by and held the coats of the other ones that did. Bitterness. And some of them had problems with that. you got to understand, even the, even the man of God that was to pray for Paul said, Lord, do you know who this guy is? <laughs> I mean, now what a question to ask God, right? <laughs> well, you better believe I know who he is. I'm the one that just spent the last 30 minutes changing his heart. I'm the one that just opened his eyes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. To the truth. Amen. And so now God is beginning to use uh, a, a murderer. Come on, a persecu uh, uh, someone who persecuted the church, someone who threw him in jail. Amen. Oh, my goodness. I, I had such a good time listening to Brother Thrasher the other night. Amen. Tell him that about the time he had, he had the Lord uh, helped him to... Uh, Started a church in his early 20s, and, and they were doing so good. And, and uh, on the way to somewhere, driving down the road, uh, a lady that uh, just came from the hospital or wherever, uh, the doctor gave him a uh, prescription medication, and uh, it was strong stuff. And she swilled, swerved over into his lane and hit him head on. And... Uh, Busted his face all up. Had to have his face reconstructed. He lost every tooth but one. Broke his back. Broke his limbs. Everything. It was a bad wreck. Amen. Weeks and weeks in the hospital. And rehabilitation 
Amen. But the Lord, I'm telling you what, God was doing miracle after miracle after miracle. Even uh, He only spent five days in rehab. And they told him it's absolutely impossible. You'll be here for at least whatever the minimum was. I'll be out in a week. And I'm going home tonight. Doctor, come in. You can't go home tonight. Your blood pressure is sky high. I'm going to go out for a few minutes. I'm going to bring back a prescription to get your blood pressure lowered. Grabbed a hold of his wife's hand. Let's pray. We're going home tonight. God, reduce this blood pressure. God, I don't know. You've done so many miracles. Help me, God. Whatever the prayer was, he prayed. He come, The doctor come back in. He said, Doc, check my blood pressure again. Amen. Checked his blood pressure again. It was perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, Mr. Thrasher, I guess we'll let you go home. Amen. And so on and so forth. But he was telling, but he was telling uh, that somehow or another he got uh, in connection uh, with the lady that hit him. And finally she, she called him. I don't know if she wanted to call him or he wanted to call her or something. But anyway, they got connected and she began to beg his forgiveness. And, and I'm so sorry that I nearly killed you. And he's in one of those, uh, cat, not a cast, but he's in a brace, you know, because he can't hold himself up. And, and all this walking business is hard and, and, and having to relearn things. And God's helping him. And, and uh, he don't look the same anymore. And, and uh, she's asking for forgiveness. And he forgave her. And she came to church and got the Holy Ghost. She's part of his church now. Amen. Praise God. You can forgive anything. Hallelujah. Come on, you don't have to have bitterness. You don't have to be ugly. Amen. And you can help anybody that wants to be helped. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, you know what it's my job to do? Try to figure out how to help each and every one. I don't get to have judgmental attitude. I don't. Brother James, you come in here and had a bad day, something happened, and you give me a dirty look that you don't realize you gave me? Shrug me off, I'm all right. I, I, don't have the, I, can, I don't have the right to say, well, man, he was, he was being a jerk to me. I tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to preach. I'm going to get right down this cross. That ain't the right spirit, is it? I better pray and say, Lord, what, what happened with James today? Can, is there something I can do to help him? Is there some way I can bless him? How dare him look at me like that? How dare him blow me off like that? That ain't the right attitude, is it? Well, when we come into this house, come on, we, we, got, we got a choice. I can help you grow in God or I can hinder you from growing in God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, boys, for helping me today. I was praying the other night, probably a couple of weeks ago. I, I'm thankful that uh, Ileana and Nelder are coming to church. I am. I'm so glad. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad they're here. To, amen. Working things out. God's blessing them. Amen. I remember the first time that Jesus came in and how many remember all that energy that came in everywhere boom boom man he did he did he'd run up jumped on that pew onto that onto my seat over there onto that seat onto the altar and boom, off into the carpet I was like yeah here we go Grandma's chasing him down. <laughs> I remember Mama held, held him down in between her and the wall over there the first couple of times. Uh, praise the Lord. 
How many has noticed the change? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I was down praying the other, other week, week or so. I said, Lord, you know, show me a way. Help me, God, in some way. Figure out a way, God, that we can help that family and not have so that they won't so that they can pray and get what they need from you without having to, you know, constantly deal with high energy children. Amen. Well, that's just the way I'm gonna put it. It ain't no A D D. Amen. You know what? It's the same principle. The reason why them three can share their toys because they've been, they've been told, hey, that's the best way to do it right there. Amen. And, and so we, we understand there's some things got to happen. But I was praying, Lord, show me a way. Show me a way. What can I do? The Lord didn't show me nothing. He didn't let me fix nothing. He said, I'll handle it. Man, I was so glad. I, 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 I was sitting, sitting right there. And service has already started. You know, we, we start with in the dark. We, we sing, and then we'll turn the lights on directly. Sitting right over here. Man, I'm telling you what, my smile come on my face. Here goes. How do you say this one's name? Demodis, Demodis, here she come, walking around here, hanging on to Violet's hand, just walking around this room, worshiping God. Whatever they do, they do it different than we do. We got so much distractions in our mind. They don't, boy. They just go to worshiping. Here we go around the room. I mean, they wasn't causing no trouble. Hey, Amen. They wasn't writing on the walls as they went by. They wasn't pulling gum out of their mouth. They wasn't trying to disturb nobody. Amen. They working. They didn't come over here and grab a hold of you and stop you from doing what you were doing. They just was going around and around. I didn't have to do a thing. I just let them worship. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. God knows how to do things, don't he? Hallelujah. You ought to be happy about that. You know what God did? He used a kid to take care of a kid. Right. Woo! And, and you know what? You parents would say, boys, now if y'all would just learn how to get along, I wouldn't have to come in here and deal with this. You, you just said what I just said. A kid, God knows what he's doing. Hallelujah. You know what I thought? Man, that is peace right there. Going around and around and around the room. <laughs> now we just got one more that we got to figure out. <laughs> Amen. You know what? I looked around. Well, where's Jesus? You know what he was? He was over there in the, in the pew doing something, being quiet. I think he was drawing or something. You know, I don't care if they draw in color. As long as they're not 13, 14 doing it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As you get older, you don't want to do those things. But you know what? He might decide to quit drawing a little bit and come around and worship. And we better let him worship. Amen. Don't, don't hint. You know what Jesus said? Suffer the little children to come unto me. Oh, Lord. Lord, you're too busy for kids. Get out of here. Y'all go run and play. Jesus, no, 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 no. Let them come. Let them come. He said, but matter of fact, while we're at it, unless you come to me like a little child, you can't even enter the kingdom of heaven. They believe everything. Amen. They don't have a problem. Brother James, if you said, you know what, you were so good in church today, on the way home, I'm getting you something. I mean, they ain't doubting you a bit. I told one of them, I said, I don't have any money. Yeah, but you got a card. <laughs> I'm telling you, they got faith. <laughs> they got faith. 
Well, how do you know? I seen you. <laughs> well, praise God. Hallelujah. You know what? I don't want to hinder somebody from getting what they need from God. And you know what? They might be little, but I remember being little. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, this is the, this is the truth. I, I was uh, 12 years old, and I woke up one morning. Man, it was summertime, no school, and I woke up. The sun was coming in the window, and, and the first thought that entered my mind is, there's no way there can be three gods. And God began to put it together in my mind before I ever pulled the covers off. And ever since then, I've never had a struggle with that, that message. But it happened when I was a kid, little kid. I had no man or woman come and set me down and say, look, you're confused. Here's how it's one God. Because God deals with children. And so... I'm not going to stop them from going around the pews. Amen. Amen. Unless they're marking on the wall or they're, you know, but if they're, oh, what, just praising God, come on, shaking, shaking a tambourine or whatever they got going on or clapping their hands or, you know, they just go around the room. Yeah, they, they might run and play after a lap or two and, and we'll have to refocus on uh, you know, but as long as they're going around, I'll tell you what, they might, they might begin to weep and cry because the love of God is uh, getting in their heart. And they might, oh, uh, man, hey, you know what? This ain't strange. I've seen the grown-ups doing this. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't you go around the room if you ain't going to let them go around the room. Don't you raise your hands if you ain't going to. Hallelujah. Don't you run the aisle. <laughs> yeah, praise God. Well, Brother Smith, we got to keep it in check. We got to make sure it's done right and all. You know what? We're going to do all of that, but we're going to let God have his way too. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. We see gum being thrown on the carpet. We're going get, to get a hold of the gum issue. Say, hey, no more gum. We see coloring on the wall. We're going to get rid of the colors. Right. Um, you remember this wall over here? We fixed it since, but they had somebody picking at the wall. Wall and little holes in it. Little tiny fingers. Amen. Well, we took care of that. It's been handled. Amen. There's no more. Oh, dear Lord, maybe they are. No, this is not. This is wear and tear. It ain't. It ain't, yeah. We've had adults knock holes in the walls. Man. Let's, let's, let's have unity. I got, I, got, I got a lot of scriptures to get, get through with here today. Brother James, will you help me? 1 Thessalonians 4 and 9. Amen. Write these down. I'm going to have you. Sister Wendy, write them down for him or... Or something. Hebrews 13 and 1. Amen. Am I going too fast? Hebrews 10, 24. John 13, 34 and 35. Amen. I'm, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to read one of these scriptures. How many know what Psalms 133 and 1 says? Come on, y'all Bible, y'all Bible yeah, scholars quote this thing for me. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like precious ointment up upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard. That went down to the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon. As the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. Even life forevermore. He's talking about how wonderful and powerful it was to see 
the man of God be anointed with the oil. But he prefaces it, prefaces it by saying how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. You know, one of these days, one of these days, we're going to go to a place where there is no strife. Amen. Isaiah 11 and 6 said that the wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and the little child, a little child shall lead them. Talk about peace. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's not do anything in strife. Amen. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 12. If you can turn there real quickly. I told you I'm, I'm going to try to go fast here the last few minutes. Amen. Praise God. Romans chapter 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. He's already cautioned us. Bring it down a little bit. I know you're holy, but you're not that holy. I know you're talented, but you're not that talented. Amen. This is what he's talking about. For as we have many members in one body, all members have not the same office. Praise the Lord. You can't replace your left foot with your right hand. It won't be the same, I promise. <laughs> Hallelujah. You ever talk to somebody that's lost their big toe? They literally had to learn how to walk again. Amen. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. How do you prefer someone? You let them go first. You let them let have the last spoonful. As if you were stuffed and can't eat no more. It don't do you a bit of good to say, well, I really wanted that, but you go ahead. That ain't preferring. Amen. Come on. God is showing us how to get to heaven. Praise God. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Amen. Ah, oh, just get over it. Well, come on. <laughs> Amen. That's a little hard, ain't it? Be of the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. You want to talk about somebody filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, praise God. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. 
If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Well, praise the Lord. I know this is, this is a lot of meat to chew on here this morning, but I think we can do it. Amen. We just got to get it in our mindset. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's about you. It's about, it's about the brother. It's about the sister. Amen. How can I come in here and help you get closer to God? Even if it hurts me. Even if it tires me out. I don't want to go up there and pray with them again. They prayed last three nights in a row for an hour and I'm wore out. Don't have that attitude. They just don't realize that they don't have to repent anymore. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians, Brother James. Hey, here, here, here. Hear ye, hear ye. This is the only way they'll hear ye. <laughs> Amen. I'm almost through, I promise. We'll go get a pizza or something. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. You're taught of God to love one another. This is what God said. If you got the Holy Ghost, you're going to know how to love. Amen. Hebrews 13 and 1. Let brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. Is this too, is this, this a hard message, ain't it? Amen. You're my brother, you're my sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Consider one another. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what? Now, listen, my children know me. I know my children. My wife knows me. I know my wife. And we all have buttons. Amen. I, I was working on some of her buttons last night. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. Well, you know what it is. I mean, now, if you're going up to them and purposely pushing those buttons, you're wrong. Amen. You, you got the wrong spirit. Right. Now, you push that button and you know a bad spirit's about to happen, you, you're at fault, not them. Amen. Well, hello? That's good. Yes, sir. Go talk to God to see if I'm right. My. Well, they let out curse words. I hope you don't, but hey, you know. <laughs> Amen. Let brotherly love continue. You want to have good church? We got to have God in here. That's and right. God is love. God is love. You know, I've got this. I, I got one, one or two more scriptures, but I won't say. I, I've got this thing and where I have, I don't know what happens. I, I get my equilibrium is off. My ears are full. I have to go get them cleaned out every now and then because it just messes messes with my balance and and it's painful i mean the side of my jaw is tender to the touch i'll think something's wrong with me for days and then i'll it'll dawn on me i i gotta go get i gotta go get what these things washed out or have somebody help me with it or you know gotta go get some stuff from walmart whatever Get it all taken care of, right as rain. 
but for two or three weeks, it'll work on, and I'll think, man, I'm, boy, I got to get on this pill or that diet or this or that, and I'm thinking, boy, I'm, here I'm, I'm dizzy, my head's hurting, and his, my ears was full. My equilibrium was off. But at times, the slightest little noise, I was telling Judah, man, can you, can you not hit that drum? That snare drum does it for me. I mean, especially I'm all over here trying to play, play, uh, play during Sunday morning, and I'm over here. Man, I'm just, I'm tearing it up, Mom. It ain't even working today, man, I tell you. Yeah, I'm, man, I'm going to it. And that thing's just wearing me out. I want to kick him off the drums for two weeks. Because <laughs> he knows better than just beat that thing right in my ear. <laughs> but I, I'm telling you. Now, listen. I can't do a thing about it. I mean, the Holy Ghost was falling to people. I, I, I ain't about to stop. You know what I had to do? I had to turn this thing around. I had to, there's one little note on here that I can't stand to hit when I'm, oh, that one drove me to the moon right there. And, and, and I have to, I really have to work on uh, just ignoring it and, and letting it go or not hit that button again. But I really have to control myself to, to, to not put it all off on him. He's just over there doing his job. You know on the bottom of that snare there's a, there's a set of springs on it. And that's what makes the crisp sound. Right? If they don't raise that spring up tight against the, the drum, you're not going to like the sound of the drums no more. But every now and then, that, that spring, I can hear that spring so, oh, so tenderly. <laughs> Amen. Ask you to how many times he nearly got a beating in here but in between Sunday services. Get off of those drums. I'm in, sitting in there with the door shut and it's driving me crazy. I come in here and I think, well, how are they? My wife's over asleep. How in the world can she? <laughs> you just ignore it. Now, I've heard her get after him, too. Oh, you bought earplugs. Well, I'm buying me some. <laughs> Amen. Borrow yours when you ain't looking. Mm. That'd be gross, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, amen. I, I'm just telling you, look, I could get an ugly, nasty old attitude. But he's got to learn how to play the drum somehow. He got to have some practice. I mean, we go to school on Monday and Tuesday, and in the summertime he's working with me. I didn't let him do nothing but work. He's turned into, you know, good hand. Praise God. You got to let him. Got to let him develop. Amen. Don't get no ideas tonight, today after church now. <laughs> Last scripture. You, you know what? We just, we got to, if somebody's getting the Holy Ghost, whatever's, whatever's bothering you, look, we got this little room over here. I call it the sick room. If you're sick, go over there. Or if you're, if you just can't, it, it, I mean, if you're, if you, if it's hot in here and you need it cooler, go in there. If you need it cooler, if it's cold in here, yeah, there's no cool in there. You can go in there. I promise you. Whatever you got to do. Just don't don't hinder a move of God. Right. Amen. Don't when the Holy Ghost is moving, just let it move. Yeah. Amen. I've come in here so sick sometimes I thought I'm gonna pass out. I've actually had to have prayer. Amen. Right up here. Lord, I'm dizzy. Help me, Jesus. Amen. If I'd have stayed home, everybody would have probably understood. Amen. I mean, I'd love, I love to hear Sister Hannah sing, but there's some songs I got to stay away from the speaker because it is, the, the, the pitch is just right. All right. Amen. Now, listen, I'm telling you, you don't believe me, you try it. You got something like that going on, and they, they know I'm not picking on them. You got something going on with that, 
just turn. It, it works. Mm -hmm. Just turn. The reason why it's 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 driving in and out. Just just turn your head one way or the other. It'll work. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Don't hinder a move of God. Praise God. Just let it happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, one more scripture. John chapter 13, verse 34. I remember one time I was coming up here, and I was, it was hot. I was preaching. I reached down under this door to get me one of my waters, and they was gone. I thought, I know I just put waters in there. Amen. A couple of times I've seen Sister Hannah put waters under here. So I know there's waters in here. I had to figure out where the waters went. Well, my kiddos found out that they were there, too. And them waters is for the preachers and the singers. So we had to teach them. You know what? I mean, right in the middle of service, I could have just went crazy on everybody. Where's my waters? Well, they're gone, and there ain't no sense in. We can find them later. We're having church. Amen. I'm, I'm dying up here. But we have in church. Yeah. People, people are getting blessings. Yeah. They don't nobody know I'm dehydrating and falling out. They just know Holy Ghost is moving. Right. And I'm not about to exert my authority and find out where my waters are. Right. You know what I'll do? I'll go, to, I'll, go, I'll go get an empty bottle and say, hey, come here, son. Put some water in there. Problem solved. Well, hallelujah. Come on. Let brotherly love continue. Yeah. I'll just say, hey, children, listen. Don't get those waters. We got a stack of them in there. Y'all go, you, you get one out of there if you want. There's a water fountain right here. These right here, this is so that I don't have to traipse all over the house to get them. They're Amen. right here. Amen. A little teaching goes a long way. Yeah. I don't have to get a bad spirit over it. Right. Well, praise God. Where are we at, James? A new commandment I have I give unto you. Oh, another new command a new commandment. All right. God's fixing to leave. He's fixing to go up in the clouds. This is it. This is the last thing you need to know. That ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Mm-hmm. And thirty five. By this shall all men know By that this. What I just said, this is how they're going to know you're my disciple. If ye have loved one to another. My goodness. Praise the Lord. If you have loved one to another. Amen. Amen. They were in one accord in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Amen. They were in unity. Abraham said, don't let there be any strife between me and you. You know what he said? This, this, is, this is wonderful. Abraham had the perfect answer, the right spirit. I tell you what, Lot, I don't want, I don't want to fuss and argue with you. I'll tell you what, I'll give you first choice. You go this way, I'll go that way. If you go that way, then I'll go this way. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen. Let me tell you something else. I'm closing this book. I'm stacking it up. We're done. Children, y'all start practicing. We're going we're gonna to let y'all up here in a minute. Look, I done told you about that certain note right here. I think it's the A note. One of these really. It's just right there. I'm getting old, I guess. But if I know, if I know that that same problem that I got, you got, and I'm wearing it. I'm in the wrong. So don't go doing things 
that you know. Well, praise God. That ain't brotherly love. That's pushing buttons. See, it, it goes both ways. Amen. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Let there be no strife between us. This is what God gave me to preach this morning. Maybe we should have them children sing that song. When we all pull together. Remember, they made me do it. Grab hold of somebody. It worked. Mm. How happy we'll be. Praise the Lord. We got, we got to figure it out. Praise God. There have been many a times and I thought, you know what? That right there is going to have to stop. That right there is getting on my nerves. And then I'll be right there to deal with it. And it's resolved. Whew. Well, I didn't, make, I, had to, I didn't have to make a fool out of myself or them either one. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because the Holy Ghost fell and people got the spirits right and the light come on. And God will help you if you'll let him help you. But God wants to see the love of God. Men want to see the love of God. Show me a smile. I don't want to see depression. When I call you, you say all is well. Ooh, Lord's been good to me. Man, man. Hey, Pastor, while we're, while we're at it, why don't you pray about this certain situation? Yeah, amen. Instead, you get on the phone, oh, Lord, I don't know if I can make it. I think the devil just, you know, he's, he's good at what he does, and he's getting the better of me. No, no, no. He's going to continue to get the better of you. Let's, let's just talk about how good God is yeah. and how, how wonderful God is and how strong God is and God's helping and God's blessed. Amen. You know what? I might not be making as much money as I want to make, Brother Harrington. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not living under a bridge. It could be better, Brother James, right? <laughs> but it could be worse. What a way to look at it. Hallelujah. And God is so good. Let's, uh, 